Well, guess who is back <laughs> in the house? <laughs> the one and only Ojinika Oji Ope, who is tourist trending around the world. Hello, Ojinika. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Welcome How are you? back. Thank you very much. I so am happy I was, to be uh, back. Okay, don't let me know. After the program. <laughs> Special debriefing as always. You know that. <laughs> How are you? I'm I missed good. you both. Well, really? Well, really well. How are you, Ayo? Very well, thank you. Perfect. I don't know what, what, what I missed more. You or Dr. Abati's introduction? <laughs> I what think it was me. Yeah. Forget about Dr. Abati's introduction. <laughs> so good to see you. So good to see you. Welcome yeah. back. But you know, I haven't seen you in a while. Yes, so we yes, have a lot. We have to long, catch yes, up. Yes. How was Dubai? It was good. It was Fantastic. Good. Thank you. Well done. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Nigeria, international observers express disappointment in the supplementary election conducted in Adamawa State over the weekend after INEX resident electoral commissioner for the state, Hudu Yunisa Ari, declared the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Aisha Dahiru Binani, as winner of the state governorship election before the coalition of results was concluded. When I left, I was informed that we resume in the morning at 11 o'clock. Um, and then this morning to find out that something had derailed that scheduled process at 9 o'clock was, was devastating to say the least. Um, the count was very transparent. It was going very, very well. I think that the last 10 local governments should be completed to finish off and get the true result of the election itself. Then, a video showing officers of the Nigerian military rehearsing ahead of the presidential inauguration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu on May 29th at the Eagle Square in Abuja went viral over the weekend. In India, Atik Ahmed, a former politician convicted of kidnapping, was shot dead live on television along with his brother over the weekend. Ahmed, who was under police escort, was talking to reporters when a gun was pulled close to his head in Allahabad. After the shots were fired, three men who had been posing as journalists quickly surrendered and were taken into custody. The 60-year-old politician, who had been facing a life sentence for kidnapping, has had dozens of cases, including murder and extortion, registered against him over the past two decades. Under sports, 28-year-old Choma Onyekwere delivered a stunning performance in the women's discus throw at the Oklahoma Throw Series over the weekend in Ramona, California, achieving a massive personal best of 64.96 meters. Onyekwere, who already has a wild card to the World Athletics Championships in Budapest, with her status as African champion, also broke the 16-year-old African record set by South Africa's Elisna Naoud. Her latest feat surpassed the World Championship qualification record. Then, world's fastest female hurdler, Tobiloba Amushan, competed in her first 100 meters hurdles race of 2023 at the Tom Jones Invitational in Florida, securing a second place finish with a time of 12.59 seconds. And the winner is... Finally, on her entertainment, nominations for the ninth edition of the Africa Magic Viewers' Choice Awards were announced over the weekend. 14 categories were open to public voting, while 21 categories were decided by the panel of judges, headed by veteran film director, producer, and writer Femi Odubemi. The AMVCA recognizes outstanding achievements in the African film and television industry and has become one of the most prestigious awards in the continent's entertainment industry. The awards ceremony will be held on May 20th, 2023. God bless you guys. AMVCA, God bless you. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you. Dr. Abati, you were clapping for us. Well, that was last year. She is your fan, isn't she? Well, I can't wait for the awards ceremony. All right, well, let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the controversial declaration of Aisha Binani Dahiru, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, as winner of the Adamawa State gubernatorial election before the coalition of results in the state were concluded. 
on Sunday. Social media was awash with reactions after a video showing Hudu Yunisa Ari, the resident electoral commissioner, made the declaration to the dismay of opposition agents. No, 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 Following the announcement, the APC governorship candidate delivered an acceptance speech while crowds of supporters tripped out to congratulate the illegally declared winner. Mama Vittiri Oyoyo! Mama Vittiri Oyoyo! Adama stands tall on the threshold of history. My dear Adama state citizens and residents, I am overwhelmed and humbled by your show, by your show of love and confidence in electing me to serve as your governor as from May 29 this year and for the next four years. For this, I say a very big thank you. Well, spokespersons of the All Progressives Congress, Festus Keamu also congratulated Binani after the declaration. Keamu took to his official Twitter page to describe Aisha's victory as a glass-shattering watershed for Nigerian women. Well, his tweet reads, Just woke up in the U.S. to this wonderful news. I am screaming my head off here. This is such a glass-shattering watershed for the women of Nigeria. Huge congratulations to my sister, Senator Aisha Tu Dahiru Ahmed Binani. At a point in the struggle, we were speaking like a dozen times a day on the phone. Special thanks to all those who worked so hard for this. Special thanks to the good people of Adamawa State for smashing this hoodoo of gender bias. Special thanks to the APC for making this possible. Special thanks to President Muhammad Buhari for providing such sterling leadership. Special thanks to Nigerians for your support and prayers. Now, for the women of Nigeria, please go ye forth to conquer. I mean, that would be, that. I, mean, I can see you um, rolling your eyes. But it would have been a perfect speech if she actually was... The winner. I mean, it really would have been yes. amazing. But I mean, this is the issue with the spokespeople. I know you always have issues with the <laughs> spokespeople, especially from the APC. But in the meanwhile, the INEC reg, Hidu Yunisa Ari, is reported to have been paid huge sums of money to rig the gubernatorial election in Adamawa State. In a video that made the rounds on social media on Sunday, an alleged senior DSS official who was apprehended by some young people at City Green Hotels in Yola, stated that he was told to give the REC about 2 billion naira to rig the election. Well, meanwhile, a professor Abdullahi Abdul Zuru. The present INEC Commissioner Northwest and former Vice Chancellor of Usman Damfodio University Sokoto and Federal University of Technology MENA, who was sent to Adamawa State as part of INEC's supervisory activities, was attacked by a mob who mistook him for the Adamawa State wreck, Barista Hudi Yunisa Ari, for illegally returning Aisha Dahi Rubinani as governor elect. Now, just wear your trousers, wear your trousers. Now, Baba. But the return officer, they have sent. The return officer, they are. Oh, this was 
frustrating to yes. watch. I mean, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, really? This man Such has been an disgraced. But yes, this is disgrace. so unfair that this happened to this man. And why? Because INEC dropped the ball again. Well, Ayo, please, your comment. Yes, INEC dropped, dropped the ball royally in Adamawa State over the weekend, as within other states, because um, there are 24 states where supplementary elections were held over the weekend. But Adamawa State is in the spotlight because of what a number of people have described as a naked dance in the marketplace, a royal show of shame, um, the highlight of the drama amongst dramas that have occurred in the elections this year, and um, INEC not being ready, as they assured Nigerians, on, you know, on, in, in the days leading to the elections. But well, speaking to Professor Zuru, yes, INEC was complicit. INEC was, I mean, not complicit, but INEC can be looked at as not producing a, um, an election that people can write to him about. However, it is no justification for people to take matters into their own hands and beat up a man who then turns out to be innocent, such that they stripped him of his dignity, stripped him of his, um, you know, of, of any sense of, of dignity, really. As we were speaking earlier on to um, Mr. Osaze Uzi, um, earlier on, he had talked about the fact that this is even a discouragement for people who, because this is a professor, a former um, um, VC of a university, who has been so disgraced nationally in this way and in this manner. He's been summoned to the INEC office um, in, in this morning alongside the REC who announced the legal results. And going back to the earlier, um, what you had mentioned earlier on, let me speak to, because I know Doctor um, would speak to the illegality of what was done on Saturday. But let me speak to um, Mr. Festus Keyamo and Senator Binani. First of all is that Senator Binani must have known that Number one, results were not fully collated. Therefore, they shouldn't have called Absolutely. on a winner. Second of all, that the person who announced her as winner was not legally or constitutionally, uh, uh, you know, um, there was no constitutional provision for him to announce her as winner. So illegal on all fronts. Therefore, she coming out very quickly to give a, you know, an acceptance speech in itself is very suspect. And the fact that she's a serving senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, so she should know better. It just demonstrates the fact that Politicians in Nigeria, unfortunately, are desperate for power enough to not mind the process or whether it's legal or, legal or illegal, the fact that they just announced and then any, anything you want to do, the very famous um, saying, go to court, is what they would just announce me and let everybody else go to court. And then I feel very sad as a woman because it puts a blight yes, on what absolutely. a number of people have said should be a process where women around Nigeria should be very you know, um, jubilant about the fact that we could potentially produce the first elected female governor of a state a northern state for that matter in Nigeria. It rubbishes the process and it almost takes away the shine of that golden moment. And then Mr. Festus Kayamo, as an essay and a senior advocate of Nigeria, a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a, a, you know, a man who is learned by every sense, in every sense and by every word, coming out to celebrate and, um, you know, and, and talk about an illegality in itself is one that he should probably delete his, Insta <laughs> his Twitter handle and not tweet for a while. It Twitter is disgraceful. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it is quite disgraceful yes. and a lot more is expected from him absolutely we've seen a lot of these actually i mean this is i, I think it's still up there uh, dr bati well just to say this uh, first was keamo allowed his emotions to get ahead of him he could give the excuse that he was in the uh, u.s different time zones because he had been cited at the uh, spring yeah, meetings that's what he said. of the imf that's what he said in the tweets Bank. yeah and, uh, you know, maybe because of time difference, he probably did not know what was going on exactly at home. Uh, the excitement that he has shown, if the uh, lady had actually won, it would have been properly uh, placed. After all, there were many other persons, even during the initial election that was inconclusive, uh, who had already started congratulating her. Yes. But Festus Kiyamu, having now been fully apprised of the situation, and given his status as a legal practitioner, one would have expected that 24 hours later, uh, he would have deleted that particular tweet. I wouldn't say his entire uh, Twitter account, but that particular tweet. But I checked, it is still there. <laughs> and that is what even makes it uh, you know, uh, really embarrassing. Now, the second uh, issue about uh, Mrs. Aisha Dahiro. I think Mrs. Aisha Dahiro, popularly known as Binani, owes the people of Adamawa State, and indeed the people of Nigeria, an apology for delivering an acceptance speech that may not 
work eventually when the entire process is concluded. Because as at the point, the collation center uh, said, uh, went on recess and said they would reconvene at 11. The Fintry, the candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party, was leading with 31,496 votes in seven out of the 10 local governments that had been declared so far. There were still 10 local government areas uh, to be declared. And the uh, candidate of the APC, uh, having our own uh, you know, uh, uh, agents, party agents at the coalition center, uh, could not have pretended that she wasn't aware that that process had not been concluded. So what do we say to all of this? There is need for investigation, thorough investigation of what happened and allegations that money exchange hands and all of that will require investigation, thorough investigation. Now, having done the investigations, we'll expect that persons should be sanctioned. The uh, Uduari, the resident electoral commissioner who went and engaged in this act of impunity, has been told to report to the INEC headquarters in Abuja. But another report has said that he is at large. I think he should be immediately declared a wanted person if he does not show up. Because as I have pointed out earlier on this uh, program, you know, there are so many infractions of the law with specific penalties prescribed in the Electoral Act under Section 120, Subsection 4. And also, uh, if you check the uh, Criminal Code, Section 294, you are not allowed to, to cause a breach of the public peace. It caused a breach of public peace. Yes. And it caused damages. Absolutely. And that takes me to the uh, uh, professor, the national commissioner. I think INEC should learn his own lessons from here. Uh, better protection should be provided for INEC officials on the field. Uh, the professor, uh, Professor Zulu, he was not uh, he was not even at the place where the uh, crime was uh, co uh, committed, but he was the one that uh, aggrieved persons saw Very and they said, sad. oh, this is uh, the INEC man, and they subjected him to bodily harm. Even if it was Udu Hari, uh, the alleged offender uh, that was uh, apprehended, we do not recommend jungle justice. Jungle justice is, una is unacceptable. Nobody should be subjected to extrajudicial punishment. So that is the point there. And INEC has issued a statement to say that they're going to take up the matter and ensure that the security agencies prosecute the persons who are responsible for the assault on that uh, former vice chancellor. However, the security agencies themselves are part of the problem. Yeah. Was it not a DSS official that you showed in that video uh, who was being... Uh, uh, query. Was he not the uh, police commissioner and other policemen who were reported to have uh, provided protection for Uduari, the man who illegally announced a uh, uh, result? So this is the problem. There should be a general probe. And it's not just INEC, the inspector general of police, the other security agencies should ensure that, uh, you know, people who have tried to derail the process are brought to book. And finally, INEC must show good faith in ensuring that the process is concluded. Yeah. We cannot have double inconclusive election, whether in Adamawa or elsewhere. The due process should continue and the properly, validly elected person should be duly announced. And all the stakeholders in Adamawa should be advised that the entire country is watching them and that we do not want the kind of impunity, the kind of criminality, the kind of desperation that we have seen in, uh, in uh, Adamawa. The only people that will gain from this will probably be the people in Nollywood who would uh, find this very good stuff <laughs> for future entertainment. I mean, I can't even describe it as entertainment. It is quite shocking, very embarrassing. I'm embarrassed as a Nigerian for this to be happening. I mean, there is clear indication. That we have videos. We have that DSS, uh, alleged DSS officer who said that, you know, who claimed that he Still was naira. paid two billion naira, Absolutely. and then we're still here. No one's been apprehended at this point. Well, you know, in the same vein, reports indicating that the candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, won the February 25th presidential election in Obiokbo, local government area of River State. According to reports uploaded on the INEC results viewing portal, IREV has made rounds on social media. 
Ayo, Dr. Abati, this same report. I mean, we are having the same information about INEX. Um, what would I even call, call it at this point? I don't even know what, what to use to describe INEC. Is, is it ineptitude? Corruption? <laughs> I mean, so many what things. can we use to describe INEC at this point? There is reports of rigging in River State. I mean, the numbers are huge. I don't know if you saw that report. And then we are not even hearing anything at this point from INEC. Why is Adamawa State different from River State, Dr. Abati? Well, I mean, in this particular case, this uh, part, uh, report from uh, Obiwa Akbo, uh, local government. By the way, that's the local government area of the governor yes. of River State. And also from Degema uh, is the, uh, you know, report of uh, investigation carried out by Premium Times, yes. you know, uh, a newspaper. And what Premium Times did was to just uh, tabulate the report, compare yeah. what is reported in the INEC reporting uh, 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 portal, IREV, IREV, with, you know, what was announced on election day. And they pointed out discrepancies uh, in that regard. So you, you, you give them credit for investigating Absolutely. journalism. Absolutely. However, the matter of the election has gone to the tribunal. Yes. Petitions have been filed. Cross petitions have been uh, filed. So the evidence that is available is now for the lawyers to present before the presidential election petition tribunal. But I always say it, in election matters, what is required is substantial compliance. Right. So once INEC can prove substantial compliance, well, that's where, you know, the fireworks uh, will awesome. probably begin. Well, all right. We shall take our final story. Independent journalist David Houdain set social media buzz over the weekend after he uploaded images of a Guinean diplomatic passport bearing Bola Ahmed Tinubu's details on his Twitter account. The passport also carried Tinubu's image and appears to have been issued in October 2015 with the expiration date of October 2020. David reported that the passport was apparently issued to Tinubu while his ally, Alpha Conde, was Guinean president. Tinubu had publicly claimed credit for helping Conde secure re-election in October 2015. Tinubu, whose emergence as president-elect, has been challenged by Atiku Abubakar, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, and Peter Obi, candidate of the Labour Party, has had numerous allegations of corruption and illicit activities levied against him. The latest disclosure that the president-elect obtained Guinean citizenship, however, has met a strident silence from his spokespeople who have previously been quick to defend him, or users on social media have shared mixed reactions. Let's take some tweets. This is from Spotlight, who wrote, Tinubu met his friend and brother, President Conde, in May 2015. Tinubu, in June 2015, visited Conakry, Guinea, to assist in the elections. October 6, 2015, a Guinean passport was issued to Tinubu. Nigerian law doesn't allow the president to naturalize in another country. Well, Pastor wrote, David Houdain claimed Tinubu is female. He claimed Tinubu is 87 years old. He claimed Tinubu is Amanda Ogunlere. He claimed Tinubu didn't attend university. He has now defeated his previous claim by saying Tinubu is from Guinea. This isn't journalism. This is borderline insanity. As you know, Dr. Abati and Ayo, David Hudei has been very, you know, popular in, you know, reporting, I don't know, criminality or fraud against Tinubu. This is the latest one. Um, really quickly, if you can answer this question, Dr. Abati, because you are a lawyer, there is the um, conversation whether, you know, if you are a dual citizen, you cannot well, be as they president say, Jeneca, of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Whoever has evidence, <laughs> Whoever is agree, go to class. Absolutely, as always. Well, thank you both. Again, for your great analysis of what's trending. I'm happy to be back. Well, yeah, I'm glad to <laughs> have you back. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.